This video describes a safe harbor rule that will keep you 100% safe from the IRS after converting a property to personal use after a 1031 exchange. Uh, the IRS back in 2008 created a safe harbor. It's my favorite revenue procedure. I've been doing this 26 years. It is my absolute favorite revenue procedure. Um, it's on my nightstand. I read it every night before I go to bed. It gives me happy dreams. Very cool. Um, TMI, I know. Um, so uh, here's a, it, it's a revenue procedure that actually it's a safe harbor that outlines how you have to treat a property after an exchange before you can convert it to personal use. So it's a recipe of how to buy things with a 1031 and legally convert them to personal use. Um, so here's that safe harbor. By the way, it's called a safe harbor, which means if you follow these guidelines, you are safe from the IRS which is a rare thing, right? So it's a really rare thing. We see them issue safe harbors. So here's the recipe. It's two years. Sell your land, sell your rental properties, you know, sell your investment properties, do an exchange, buy your absolute dream home up in Tahoe or Bodega Bay or something like that. For the first two years, you have to treat that property two ways. One is you have to limit your personal use to two weeks a year or less, or 10% of the rental history, whichever is a greater number. So if you rented it on Airbnb for like 300 days a year, you could use it personally for 30 days a year. Now, if I'm going there to um, like paint it or build the deck, is that a personal use visit? Yes. No, it's not. That's a maintenance visit, right? Which means there's ways to use it for more than the two weeks a year, right? Um, as maintenance visits, legally within the code, right? But, but that's the first thing you have to do is limit your personal use. Um, the second thing you have to do is show income on it, but that's an insanely low standard. You only have to show two weeks per year of income on it. That's really? it. That's it. That's crazy low. Right? I was shocked when they came out with the two weeks a year. I thought it'd be three to six months, um, but it's only two weeks. So that means I can sell an investment property. <laughs> Bailey can sell her land that she owns, right? Take all that money, buy her dream home. All she has to do for the first two years is limit her personal visits to it and then find a buddy to rent it to for two weeks a year. Yeah, that's all you have to do. Guess what you can do after two years? Whatever you want. You can move into it as a primary. You can just treat it as a pure second home of vacation. You never have to rent it again. And your exchange is absolutely safe harbor. can't be challenged by the IRS. That is phenomenal. Wait, so you just have to make it a, not, not primary, but like a, sorry, it just has to be income producing for the first two years and then after that it's. But the only income, yeah, the only, the only income on it needs to be two weeks a year, right? Two years for two weeks. Yeah. So rent it out for that two weeks and then you can start up a bunch of mini projects and still live there basically. I'm gonna paint, I'm gonna mess around with the yard, make the fence nice. I would ask you to defer all of your tax fraud questions to your own CPA. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 no, yeah, no, no, yeah. yeah, I mean, you can't live there full time, right? But you can obviously go there for maintenance visits, things like that. Whatever, but whatever your CPA, whatever you and your Cpa feel is a defensible position right gotcha. uh, yeah but so you know you can basically you can kind of leave it vacant right the whole time and, and use it a little bit mm -hmm. uh, and then you just have to show the income now if you need to rent it full time great wonderful rent it full time but we're talking about a dream home scenario here right for your clients and what's the last thing you typically want in a dream home Attendant. Attendant. people yeah exactly yes is there a template that you need to prove like when you went how when you weren't there, what the two weeks of income was, when it was? Yeah, when you file your Schedule E, um, you know, you're reporting that rental income on it, it'll ask for how many days in service and things like that. So yeah, I mean, it's traceable for the most, most part in your tax record, but it's really just the honor system, right? Whatever you and your CPA are claiming. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and if it comes down an audit, what you're asked, if, 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 yeah. if you are. And if you did short-term rental, you'd probably just show like your Airbnb record. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're not probably not. I mean, if you only truly want to rent it for two weeks a year, you're not going to put it on Airbnb, right? right? Because you're going to be every single week, you're going to be telling people no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah. But uh, you don't have to have it on Airbnb, but you can or VRBO or whatever. Or you can just, you literally just have to show the income, right? Which means you had a buddy rent it from you. Yeah. Yeah. What is that safe harbor tax code? Just so I can the revenue procedure is 2008-16. It's RevProc 2008-16. Uh, fantastic revenue procedure. Thank you so much for watching this video. Just so I know what type of videos to make in the future, please subscribe to the channel. Give this video a like and drop a comment if you thought it was helpful so I can make more videos just like it.